kids. Yeah. Hi, everybody. We are live. Welcome to OSD Go Live. And this is a very special episode. This is the World Read Aloud Day episode, and we have an incredible special guest. You might notice that we are sitting here with our amazing English and Library Services Director, Beth Zirianis, and her daughter, Zoe. Hi. Shout out to the School 5 family. <laughs> You might um, recognize Zoe. Zoe's actually what I call an internet superstar because she has her own little YouTube channel and her own little YouTube show called Zoe's World. Take a look when you get a chance. So, what is World Read Aloud Day? World Read Aloud Day is a, a day where we call global attention to the importance of reading aloud and books. And what better way to celebrate books than in this House, where the love of books emanates every day. And of course, with our director, um, Dr. Zirianis, books are a part of our world in the Oceanside School District. So without further delay, enjoy the show and OSD go live. Thank you. We're going to get ourselves situated. And we are really thankful, as Mrs. Provito said, that we work in a district, and Zoe goes to school in a district, where we don't just celebrate reading aloud um, on one day, that we celebrate it all the time. So just a quick shout out to Ms. Maresca's class, who I had the opportunity to read for Re uh, World Read Aloud today. We read the book Carnivores, and we had a little dance party after, but sh that's just our secret, so hi, guys. Um, and Zoe, you said your shout out to the School Fight family, right? Yep. We're going to read two books to you tonight. The first one is a short one, but really is special um, for the meaning behind today. And then we're going to read you a second book that Zoe picked out that I think you'll really enjoy. So this first book is called I Am a Story. It is a beautiful book. It was recommended to us by the School 5 and School 8 librarian, Mrs. Burns, who knows so much about books. But what's really special about this book is not only the message behind the story, but the illustrations are some of the most beautiful illustrations I've ever seen in a picture book. So if you're not able to really see them tonight, I really do recommend that you go to your local bookstore um, or to the library and make sure that you take out a copy. All right, are you ready to get started? I'm ready. I'm going to sit up on my knees a little bit. Maybe you should do the same so that we make sure the book is high enough for everyone to see. All right, so let's get started. I am a story. I am a story. I was told around a campfire. Then painted on cave walls. I was carved onto clay tablets and then told in pictures. I was written on papyrus and printed with ink and wood blocks. Then woven into tapestries and copied the big books to illuminate minds. I was printed and bound, then acted out on stage. Good old Shakespeare. I was read in vast private libraries. Then in public libraries open to everyone. And in places you'd never imagine. I love this book, um, Vending Machine, and I asked Mrs. Provito right before this, maybe we should think about an OSD Go Read book vending machine, we'll see. And I like the elephant with the books on its back. I made people frightened, excited, sad, and happy. I was censored, banned, and burned, but did not die. I've inspired millions. I can go with you everywhere. And live and will live forever. I, I am, am a story. story. So I hope you really enjoyed that. was just our first quick one. But again, I want to reiterate the message is so special about the power of words, the power of language, the power of oral storytelling, and of course, the power of the written word, um, which has gone into books um, for many years. But the illustrations really are gorgeous. So if you haven't had a chance, 
Um, well, obviously you haven't, but I go and take out this book because I think you'll enjoy it. And thanks again to Mrs. Burns for recommending it. So our second book and our final read to commemorate World Read Aloud Day, I let Zoe pick it out. And for those of you who know Zoe, and now those of you who know her um, from this event, um, she is obsessed with sloths. So when I told her she could pick out the second book, naturally she chose a book that was about a sloth. Um, this book is a really special one called Sparky. And it's about a young girl who really, really wants a pet. And she begs her mom for a pet, a dog, something that we all would consider a pet. And her parents keep putting her off. And finally, they tell her, well, you can get a pet if it really doesn't require any care. And she ends up getting a sloth. So this is her story. It's a really um, funny story. And we hope that you'll enjoy it. Ready to go? I'm ready. All right. My partner in crime here. I'm going to do my best to try and read it upside down. Um, so hopefully we don't make any mistakes. All right. Go for it. I wanted a pet. A a bird, or a bunny, or a trained seal. My mother said no to the bird, no to the bunny, no, no, no to the trained seal. I asked her every day for a month until she finally said, you can have any pet you want as long as it doesn't need to be walked or bathed or fed. I made her promise. So no walking, no bathing, and no feeding. Then I went to see the school librarian, Mrs. Nickelbaum, who knows everything in the world, pointed me to volume S of the Animal Encyclopedia. This is what I found. Sloth. Sloths have been known to sleep more than 16 hours a day. They sometimes hang upside down in trees, barely moving for long periods of time. They survive by eating leaves and drinking the dew that collects in them. It is said that sloths are the laziest animals in the world. Is that true? No, they're just extremely motivated to do nothing. <laughs> Sometimes I'm extremely motivated to do nothing, too, so I get it. I think everyone is. <laughs> My sloth arrived by express mail. He was about the size of a mediumish dog with a flat nose and a monkey face. My mother wasn't happy. But a promise is a promise, I said. Sparky, I decided. That will be your name. I took him outside to his tree. Sparky went right to sleep. I made a sign and put it under the tree. Guard sloth, enter at your own peril. It was two days before I saw him awake. And if you can see those images. He's taking a little bit of a nap. He seems like a perfect pet, actually. Maybe I can get Zoe one. He didn't know a lot of games, so I taught him some. We played King of the Mountain. And I won. We played Hide and Seek. And I won. We played Kung Fu Fighter. And I won. We played Statue. And Sparky was very, very good. That weekend, Mary Potts came over to investigate. Let me show you what Mary Potts is like. This is a picture of her room. And if you can see, Mary Potts is very organized and she's won a lot of awards. She's a, she's a winner. Before she even talk, took off her coat, Mary said, let me see your new pet. I had some worries, but I took her out to Sparky's tree. He opened his eyes and looked at us. Then he closed them again. I rubbed his belly, but it was too late. We stood there for a while watching him sleep. His fur ruffled gently in the breeze. I feel sorry for you, Mary said. My cat can dance on her hind legs, and my parrot knows 20 words. Sparky knows tricks too, I told her, but she didn't believe me. The next day, I made a poster and nailed it to the tree outside Mary Potts' house. Trained sloth extravaganza, countless tricks to mystify you. Just seven days left. Do you think he could, she can train a sloth in seven days to do these tricks? Possibly. Possibly, go ahead. All week we trained in secret. Sometimes Sparky slept through practice and I had to poke him awake. Sometimes he forgot what he was doing and we had to start over. Sometimes he took so long to fetch 
that I went inside and had dinner while I waited. I was starting to think the poster had been a mistake, but a promise is a promise. On the day of the train sloth extravaganza, my mother set up lawn chairs. Three people came to see Sparky perform. My mother, Mary Potts, and Mrs. Edwin, the crossing guard. Mrs. Edwin approved of Sparky because he never ran in the street. Do I look like a ringmaster, I asked my mother. You look very interesting, she told me. I put, I put a little glitter on Sparky just before the curtain went up. I kept wishing I had written two tricks on the poster instead of countless tricks. Play dead, Sparky, I said. And he did. Roll over, I said. And he didn't. Speak, I commanded. We all waited. And waited. Speak, I said. Sparky looked at me. The only thing you could hear was the wind in the trees. He has a very pretty coat, doesn't he? Mrs. Edwin said finally. It's not exactly a performance pet. You can't just invent a brand new pet like that, Mary told me. A pet no one's even had. My mother came out with lemonade and cookies, but everyone said they had to be going. Sparky and I watched them. Then my mother made me put the chairs away. Afterward, I gave Sparky a cookie, but he ate it so slowly that I took it back again. Poor little Sparky. It was getting dark out. I looked at him and he looked at me. You could hear all the neighborhood dogs barking. I reached over and tagged him on his claw. You're it, Sparky, I said. And, and for, for a, a long, long, long time, he was. Yay, Sparky. I hope you enjoyed that story, and if you didn't know a lot about sloths before, maybe it'll spark your interest to learn a little bit more about them. Zoe loves them. I think they're pretty cool, too. And so. maybe you'll buy one. <laughs> Zoe's going to wait for hers in Express Mail tomorrow Express Mail. also. Well, we Let's that. bring Mrs. Perito back. Hi, everyone. That was awesome. Zoe, you are an incredible leader. And of course, like mother, like daughter, <laughs> no doubt. Um, Dr. Zirianis, we had a very busy night on the sidebar, oh. I have to say. Zoe has a lot of friends out there and a lot of fans. You <laughs> yes. do. And hopefully a lot of fans of World Read Aloud Day and just reading aloud in general. Our I audience so. has grown. So You're a job. Is that's that true. You? That's true. And I have to tell you, we want to thank um, Jax and Lucy who helped us monitor the sidebar tonight and helped bring the names of some of those people that tuned in. So I'm going to go ahead and give that to Dr. Zirianis. Maybe you want to give a couple of shout outs? Sure. We'll say hi to the Burns family, to, how can you help me say that, Mrs. Pervito? The Mondo Fick family. Mondo Fick family, the McGann family, big fans of OSD Go Bees. Of course, to Beth Squared, the Castiello family. Hi, Sebastian. Mm -hmm. See you soon. The Rosens, Sacco family, the Nunez family. The Ruminus family, I just want to make sure I'm seeing all these names, right? Got the Chasons and the Lewitons, who promised they were going to watch on Twitter last night. So thank you. The Hi, Noah. <laughs> to the Keegan family. Hi, guys. Hi, Hi Matt Keegan. and Leo. <laughs> to the Jacobs family, to the Smith family, to the Connor family, to Jackson, to Lucy, oh, who helped monitor our sidebar. They're part of it. And... Um, Mrs. Castiello, I'm getting help reading on World Read Aloud Day, so thank <laughs> you. Okay. Thank My you. Uh, to Mrs. Castiello, wow, a lot of School 3 friends there, and we're going to show our little friend for the School 3 mm -hmm. family there. So thank you, Mrs. Castiello, for supporting OSD Go Read. This was so much fun. We were really nervous before doing it. Um, I was saying to Mrs. Perpito, and this is probably too much personal information, but my hands were getting very sweaty. I was worried about turning the pages. So you think you read all the time, you're going to be cool and calm and collected. But it's, it's a little scary going live. Hello it's to all my fans. <laughs> <laughs> and we want to thank you all for join, joining us for another episode of OSD Go Live. As you know, OSD Go Live is part of our amazing reading campaign, OSD Go Read. And I have to tell you, I'm so glad that a whole bunch of School 3 friends tuned in because announcing the next special guest reader. You want to do a drum roll? <gasps> Ta -da! That's right. Principal Castiello. Oh, we, we can't wait for that, that right? right? It's going to be great. 
And we're going to have some apple pie now. We wish you could all join us. We love apple pie, so we're going to have some of that. And I do want to just say a really big shout out to all of my teachers who I work with every single day, who I love. And let's go, Islanders! <laughs> and Rangers. Yeah, and Rangers. Islanders. All right. <laughs> Everybody, see you on the next episode. OSD, go loud. Bye! <laughs>